Supports. We cannot live with them, but we cannot live without them. To be honest, I hate to use supports, but sometimes they are required, we cannot avoid them. In my previous two videos, I was demonstrating a manual multicolor 3D printing, where you can change colors even in the same layer. And I'm using this me method to 3D print a supports from the soluble PVA. This means if I put the 3D printed object in the water, this material will dissolve and you can remove the supports much easier. Of course, this technique has some limitations, so it is practical only if you have horizontal contact surface between support and the object or near horizontal angle. But if the angle is too big, then you don't even need the supports because it can be printed usually with the overhang. This method can be useful if you, it's very hard to approach to the supports to remove them with the pliers or the contact part of the object is too thin and, and there is a danger that you may break it uh, by removing uh, conventional supports from the material. I'm using a Prima Select PVA Plus material, which is quite expensive, approximately 50 euros for half kilogram, but I chose this material because it is directly supported in the Prusa slicer and I don't need too much from this material because only contact layers will be in this soluble filament. Here you can see the content of the video, so you can jump to the any part. I will have four main tests. In the first two tests, I will design 3D print an object where the contact surface is horizontal. And I will use a custom support designed by me in Fusion 360. The third object will also use a custom support designed by me, but it will be curved surface under the angle. And the fourth test will be a demonstrating an automatic uh, supports generated by Prussia Slicer. For example, if you download something from Tingerverse and you have only STL file and you don't want to mess with any CAD software, so you can load it directly in the Prussia Slicer and generate those supports automatically. Even we will generate only interface layers uh, from this material. So far I saw only examples that soluble filament was used only with dual extruder 3D printers or with some kind of multi-material unit. But with this method you can do it on very simple single extruder 3D printer with manual filament change. So let's see it. Okay, this will be my first test object for these soluble filaments. So I created some custom supports because I know that uh, automatic supports, this, this would start from the printing bed, but this one would start from the object and I know that custom automatic supports uh, get generated by the slicer would be very hard to separate from this object. So the custom supports uh, will be uh, from the same material as the object, only the contact layer will be in uh, soluble filaments. I will use 0.2 mm layer height, so I created 0.4 mm for this contact uh, block because the number of the tool changes will be the same. I, uh, if I have one or two layers in the soluble filaments, I will explain that in a slicer. Okay, let's export the STL files. First, I will hide soluble filaments and export everything as an STL. And then I will make visible only soluble objects and again export the STL files. And let's import it into Prusa Slicer. First the main object and then adding a part soluble filaments. Is there but only the same color. Printer setting, extruders, two extruders, custom G code. I have to enable the M600 command here. Reducing the retraction uh, if the tool is disabled from to one millimeter. This will be the first extruder, this will be the second extruder, and of course the second extruder will be 
pretty much select PVA plus. filament. Just quick preview of the slicer. Number of tool changes 4. And so it will start with the printing here, it will ask for tool change, for filament change and continue again a tool change and same here. So no matter if I will have only one or two layers here, I will have the same number of the tool changes because I know that the uh, printer will start with this uh, PLA and then in the same layer it will create the soluble filaments and the next layer will be started with soluble filaments and again uh, change to the PLA. So it doesn't matter if I have one or two layers of the soluble filaments, I will have always two filament changes. As you can see the wipe tower is enabled because in this case I can see the number of the tool changes but then I usually uh, dis disable the wipe tower because I don't need it with a manual tool change. And again, slicer, only 26 minutes. Okay, let's try it. So far so good. And this is the last filament change for the upper part. The fan unfortunately blows away from me the extruding material. Quick tip, try to pull the filament in last moment so less material will flow from the nozzle before it arrives above the object. By default, after printing with PVA, the fan is disabled so it's much easier to grab the filament after extrusion and color change. see the soluble filament is transparent so that's why we can see these lines and it's and it's in one piece so we will see if I put it in the water theoretically it should be separated easily let's see can I remove it after five minutes at this moment I didn't know but 5 minutes is not enough, so you have to leave it in the water at least 1 or 2 hours. After this I, I 3D printed a small hook from, from this PVA filament and I tested when will it uh, dissolve in the water. Uh, and also when the supports are very tight, like in my second test, uh, I left it in the water for the whole night. Uh, then it will be much easier to separate the supports. Now let's try to remove this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I forget to cover this, but it's okay. So it, it works. Those holes are there because I didn't know that I have to enable the interface shell in the Lucia Slicer.
here you can see object is open, those, there are those holes, and after enabling the interface shells, these holes are covered. Before I continue, I needed this experiment. I had to find out uh, how much time this PVA filament needs to dissolve in the water. So I 3D print this small hook. I place a small weight on it and, and uh, put it in the glass of water. So the lower half is in the water. And approximately after one and a half hour, the nut fall down. So I, here I find out that those five minutes are definitely not enough. Warm water can speed up the process. This part was in water, it's completely soft. And this is hard. In my next experiment, I want to 3D print some letters in vertical position. So for example, here I have this base and I need these letters in vertical position, but of course I need to use supports here. So I generated these custom supports, which I, I learned from the previous test. And as you can see, only here on the contact layers, I have 0.4 millimeters uh, block, which will be insoluble filaments. And as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five layers where I will have a filament changes, multiply two, of course. I use here area black fonts, but I have to modify it because I want to have this E and F and T, same high, same position like this uh, letter C, to reduce the number of filament changes. Let's export this. Okay, first I will hide all soluble filament objects and then I can export this as STL which will be generated then in one file test to PLA Now all soluble filament objects are visible and then I will export visible objects to STL A quick tip, I added this later, if you create a host inside the soluble objects, then they will disappear in the water much faster. This is again Prusa Slicer, the procedure is same, so I will just speed up. Fire tower is still enabled, so I can see number of the tool changes, 10, which I already calculated. So now I can hide the wipe timer because I don't need it. Last two layers with soluble filaments. Back to PLA again. Let's put it in the water and wait. It's 
see you in the morning. This one fell out itself. I will just put it back in the water a little bit to clear this parts Okay, my next experiment I will use uh, custom supports for this uh, Rubik's Cube corner piece because here uh, I need a support on this surface which is not horizontal now like in previous two experiments so I create a custom supports for this surface okay I will add a custom supports first I will project this surface to this printing level and then I will add 0.4 mm distance for the custom support for soluble support object is ready as you can see I extruded to the object here but first I added some offset and then I extruded the rest F only to get more stable support I will add a small leg here circle okay much better this because it will start with the printing and it, it will give more stability to this custom support and then here I will have some filament changes. Okay, let's export this and see it in a slicer. I was hiding the soluble object. Test. First importing the main object. And now adding a part. Which will be the soluble part hmm. 10 filament changes now I can disable the wipe tower Print it for 43 minutes with the 10 filament changes. Uh, let's print it. There is a soluble filament, so I will put it in the water and see if it came down easily. It's a corner piece for this ruby cube.
And it came down easily. Here I can see some uh, rest of the silver filaments. It's very soft, but I put it back to the water, so probably it came down very easily. In this last testing I will show you how can you use this method if you have only STR file. For example, you download something from Thingiverse, it's not so easy to import it into Fusion 360 or, or any other CAD software and add those custom supports. Okay, so there is the STR file and I am adding now the supports. This is how it looks like if there will be only more materials, so these supports will be generated automatically and it is very hard to separate them. Only I will have to reduce the overhang angle but when it's good enough for my printer. Okay, so uh, I want this to be insoluble filament, so I'm starting with the printer settings. I, I'm enabling two extruders. I am adding a custom G code, which is M600, very standard command for tool automatic tool change. Uh, sorry, for manual tool change. Reducing the retraction. The second material is. Prima Select PVA, this is a soluble filament. Okay, it is still in one color. Now I have to go to the print settings, support material. Oh yes, to multiply it through there. I will disable the wipe tower. And now I am enabling, telling that support material has to be in uh, from the extruder number two, which is the soluble filament. Let's see what we have now. Okay, now everything is generated, all supports, uh, even the raft, is in the soluble filament, which we don't want everything to be soluble filament, because we, we would have, I don't know, 100 filament changes, and also we are wasting expensive material. So I go back now to print settings, and now uh, this raft skin and everything is in one, only the interface support will be in extruder number two. Let's see now what we have. There it is. Now only here the contact layers will be in this soluble filament. I can even reduce this number of interface material. Let's go back to the printer settings. Support material and interface layers. Let's reduce it to one. It should be enough. We will see. And there it is. So only here we will have eight or nine filament changes I will see later. And then everything will be printed in, in uh, PLA. Of course this can be used only if you have very near horizontal surface. In that case we will have only a few filament changes. Because you don't want to have 50 or 100 filament changes. That That's very hard. Okay, let's print this too. This was the last element change for this object. So this is the last test with automatic generated supports when I only use the soluble filament on the contact layers. It's a little bit ugly outside, but I think this will came down much easier because water can go all around. Maybe we will find out in one hour or less. Only half hours later.
I'm not sure is it visible on camera how the soluble material is going down. Almost fall down by itself. I have to clean this mess. Luck. So sticky. But it's down. I think this one it was the easiest to clean. It almost fall down by itself because it's very opened. Just to compare it, this one was printed with uh, my own custom supports and this one was printed with uh, automatic supports generated by Slicer. Only I didn't finish the cleaning but basically I think they are quite equal. So good news is that this method can work even with the syntax library with the manual filament changes. Of course it has some limitations. It is practical only if you have horizontal or near horizontal contact surfaces with the supports. But if the contact surface is too big, for example 45 degree angle, then maybe you don't even need the supports there because it can be printed with overhang. Compared to the conventional method where the supports are printed with the same material as the object, the surface is not much better with the soluble filaments. It, it may be practical if the contact part of the object is too thin and, and maybe there is a danger that, that you will break it down uh, trying to remove the supports. Or maybe it is very close, you, can, uh, you cannot reach with the pliers the contact surface like Hilbert cube which is a typical ultimate test for soluble filaments. Then again uh, using a soluble filaments is maybe practical there. So if the contact surface with the support and object is open, so you can reach it with the pliers or skeezers and, and the, the contact part of the object is very strong, so you, it, there is no danger that you will break it removing, trying to remove the supports, then use the conventional method uh, where the printed surface is in the same material as the support. Don't forget this is uh, water soluble material so PVA don't like the moisture in there and you have to keep it on a very dry place. I don't have better solution, I put the PVA in the plastic bag and put some silicon gels in there until I don't have better solution for this. I'm very happy that Prusa Slicer has support for this uh, PVA I'm using and also it has support for, for interface layers for support materials so your only contact surface has to be in this different material. I'm very curious if other slicer like Cura has this option. Please write me in the comment and <laughs> inform me if you are using this method, what will you print for it. Okay, that will be it from my side. Uh, thank you for watching and um, happy printing. Bye.